What Lord put in my heart today? Son of man, thou dwellest in the midst of a rebellious house, which have eyes to see and not and see not. They have ears to hear and hear not, for they are a rebellious house. The rebellious house. But if you check very well, it says, Son of man, thou dwellest in the midst of a rebellious house. Now, let's divine what rebellious house means. It means the individuals or the community of people that has that has forgotten the voice and the word of God to penetrate in their hearts, which means that those uh, you can be um, a light in the midst of darkness, or you can live with people that their heart is hardened. People that has uh, that has the heart of stones. So uh, we're going to explain it in two ways. When you live in the midst, 
in the community of people that their hearts is hardened. Amen. There are so many angles to this teaching. The link in the you know that Pastor Sophie put the scripture say arise and shine for your light has come. And what is light? Light there is Jesus. Light in that scripture is Christ, Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus, or Christ or Jesus, depending on the hand you look at it. You see, arise and shine for Christ has come. For Christ has come. We can also call Christ uh, the one with faces of or dimension of light, different dimension of light. Like in the outer court, we have the light of the sun. In the only place, we have the menorah. In the only place, we have the Shekinah glory. So, uh, but just let me explain it in uh, the totality of the light. But I want to emphasize on the seven spirit of God. So, when we say your light has come, it means that. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. For your light has come. So when the light comes, what light comes to do is to break the heart of stone in people. It breaks the hardened heart. When we check uh, I want to use different kind of Bibles here. Yeah. I have of Bibles here. Yeah. Let's look for another way of um, interpret hardened hearts. The hardened hearts. We we'll use some Bibles. Scriptures where Bible uh, express the hard hearts. We all know the story of Pharaoh in the book of Ezekiel, uh, Exodus 7, verse 13. It says, Yes, Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he would not listen to them. So, a hardened heart does not listen. Exodus 7 13. Darkness. 
Cross darkness is uh, is the light of this world. Cross darkness is the light that is shining or that is available in this world. Because world means uh, where darkness reigns. The word or the term word is or was in the garden of Eden and it was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. At that time, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was just caged in or the knowledge of good and evil was caged in a tree. So Adam could walk freely in the garden, but that caged knowledge, which has voice, which has smart, which has eyes, has everything, can speak to turn the hearts of Adam. So in that time, or at that time, light was upon the face of the heart. But there was a tree in the garden who speaks to turn the heart of Adam. The Bible says he was not deceived, it was Adam. The book of Timothy, first Timothy, or second Timothy. He said, had he was not deceived, he was not the one that was deceived, it was Adam. But right now, darkness is upon their hearts. So the tree of life is now like Holy Spirit in you. But everywhere around you is full of darkness. But in the time of Adam, Everything around him was full of light, but there was just one tree in the midst of the garden that speaks. But right now, the thing has been reversed, it has been changed. We only have the Holy Spirit in us, we have Christ in us, but we, are, we live in the environment that is full of darkness. When they said environment full of darkness, means that people live in that environment have hardened hearts. They have the heart of stones. They have the heart of stones. Hearts that the word of God cannot penetrate in it. They cannot hear the word of God. These hearts are the people that Bible call says that they have eyes but they cannot see. It means that they, it doesn't mean that they cannot see. They cannot see the light of God. They have eyes, spiritual eyes, that sees the light of this world. That's this darkness that dwell and live in darkness. Does everything that darkness uh, directs. Just like the Bible says, the path of the righteous is like a bright, is like a shining light. It's the same thing like the path of the righteous, the righteousness of men. That path is like the uh, dimmed or like the darkness. That path walk darkness. So, I will use Bible scripture to interpret or to explain or to define hardened hearts. So, Exodus 7 13 says, Yes, Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he would not let them go. Now, this is the heart that every day the word of God comes. 
to him through, through Moses. But he will not allow the word of God to penetrate in his heart. And that light cannot strive with his heart. The light of God cannot enter to contend with darkness that is in him. Exodus 7 23 says, For the magician of Egypt did the same by their secret hearts and enchantments. So Pharaoh's heart was hardened. So another kind of heart that's Always have these are the kind of hearts that can engage with the things of the world to prove and to have excuses to have um, to have every word that will resist. The ways of God. Because he was able to uh, see magicians that do the same thing Moses did. So, in the land that is full of diviners, in the land that is full of Systems, policies that are laws, laws. If there's any darkness, this is what it means. When you have laws, policies that, that drive the way of life of people to love what they are doing. With their whole heart, without giving any chance for the light or the word of God to be established upon that land or upon the individual. When you have gods, people, groups, or establishments, either in the government or in the environment, a land that is full of what the Bible calls the, the detestable beds, Revelation 18, is full of all kinds of beds. It's full of all kind of witchcraft. The land that, that is full of, when you talk, I'm only breaking what is called darkness, or the world full of darkness. A land where they practice all kind of things. All kind of religions, all kind of what they see as gods, they believe in all kind of unseen entities, and they call those unseen entities God. They put their hands on any all kind of things because of solution. This is one whose heart or the community that his heart is hardened. These hearts, when God is passing, they cannot discern him. This is what is called the world of darkness. 
So when the Bible says in Genesis 1, 2, that uh, now darkness now the heart was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. Darkness doesn't mean that some days you know, of, of, of the deep that the, the I mean, it's an absence of light. He's talking about the system of this world came and dwelt upon the heart. The laws. He say, and the heart was without form. Why? Now, look at your environment. Talking to those who have their past, or those who live in the Japanese countries. <laughs> the citizens of the Japanese countries, or the dwellers, or the people who have migrated to the Japanese countries. Everywhere is beautiful, right? Shine, clean. When you are a country that uh, uh, it looks like everything is working, everything is in everything, everything is in place. Lights, internet, everything is in place. Everything is clean and neat. But they don't they don't know God. So when they say the word of darkness, it doesn't mean that physical darkness. So darkness means that the culture, the system, the laws, the policy they implement in their city's house or in the government house, what they do. What they engage their hands with, anything that is outside God, these are things that constitute to the hardened heart. What makes a heart to be hardened is anyone that engages himself in things that is anti Christ. Anyone that dwells in the tabernacle of the Antichrist. Anyone who cannot discern or, or relate or engage God in his daily activities and lives. So, individuals can have adding hearts. Countries can have adding hearts. Every country has a heart, soul, and mind. There are spirits that rules in each country of this world. Every country is a is a, is as giving back to offsprings. Imagine the whole heart, over 8 million people on the heart came from one man called Adam and Eve. The whole nation called Israel came from one man called Jacob. So as an individual has spirit, soul, and mind, and body, also each country has what is called spirit, soul, mind, and body, and strength. So when the Bible says, love me with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength, or mind, and body, is either talking to individuals, or it's talking to nations.
the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and pursued the Israelites. Now, another example of a hardened heart is anyone who has become your enemy. Every enemy of light, or every enemy of the one who carries light, has is is ha, is the one with a hardened heart. Everyone who is against light is an enemy of God. Is an enemy of Christ. Is an anti Christ. Anti Christ doesn't mean someone that the Bible has a prophesied that will come. Anyone, individual, or nations. There are those things in the opposite direction of Christ is an antichrist. Anyone who is against the will of God, the plan of God, the word of God, the voice of God is an antichrist. Now let's check for Samuel chapter 6 verse 6. For Samuel chapter 6 verse 6 says, Why then do you harden your hearts, allowing pride to cause your downfall? Just as the Egyptians and Pharaoh hardened their hearts when he has severely dealt with them and mocked them. Did they not allow the people of Israel to go and they departed? Why do you harden your heart, allowing pride to call? So pride is another is another thing because if you check the heart of Pharaoh, he had pride. If you check his heart of Lucifer, he has pride. So. Having hearts is anyone who has made himself God. The Bible says, casting out imagination on every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So that high thing is also as as pride himself as. A knowledge you must explore. And so if you see a pride man, he has become, he has, if you see someone calling himself God, he believes he has everything you can explore around him or about him. Praise the Lord. Second King seventeen verse fourteen. Second King seventeen verse fourteen says, "Yes, they will not hear, but harden their neck as this their fathers who did not believe, trust in rely on and remain steadfast to the Lord their God." Anyone that has a hardened heart does not believe. Anyone that has a hardened heart does not believe in God. He believes in himself. That is pride. He believes in his action. He wants you to rely on him. So it can be individual and it can be countries. So all these countries that are calling themselves gods or trying to do something as if they want to every other country. 
These are the countries that have the hardened hearts. They have stolen hearts. And this morning we are going to crush their hearts in prayers. We are going to crush their hearts in prayers. The Bible says it's not the will of God for anyone to perish, to die in sin. These are the hearts that they have highs. They have hearts, but they are not sin. Um, if you check Ezekiel chapter 2, Ezekiel chapter 2 it says from verse 1, it said, And he said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak to you. Then the Spirit entered me when he spoke to me and set me on my feet, and I heard him who spoke to me. And he said to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their father have transgressed against me. To, the, to this very day, for they are impudent and stubborn children. I am sending you to them, that you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, as for them, whether they hear or whether they refuse, for they are rebellious house. Yet they will know that a prophet has been among them. That is Ezekiel 2. But if we talk about Ezekiel 1, you will see the different kind of demonstration of the light of God. We have supplier, we have all kinds of the things of God. Ezekiel 1 explains the uh, details of God in the spirit of God. He explains the details of God. He talks about rainbow. Talk about appearance of God, the appearance of fire and brightness. He explains all kinds of so you see one dwelling in the midst of the rebellious child or a rebellious house or rebellious uh, nations or rebellious uh, group of people. Yeah, if you see that verse, you say, and the spirit entered me. So everything that has to do with Ezekiel 1 entered into one that dwells among the rebellious house. You need to read that in Ezekiel 1. That scripture is a very deep scriptures. If you enter into it, you can come out easily. They tell us different appearance of God. I would say God is light and He dwells in light. God is light and He dwells in light. So if you a kind of person that find yourself in nations or even in your nation and look as if everything around you is is like everything your atmosphere is not is is, is your, your your environment or your atmosphere it, like uh, but, uh, the other song is said I said at the atmosphere of Jesus atmosphere of Jesus atmosphere of Jesus so you are the atmosphere of you carry Jesus everywhere you go. You have the atmosphere of Jesus. You are the atmosphere of Jesus. But everything around you have a strange atmosphere. It now looks like you are caged in Jesus. You carry Jesus. But everything around you is full of darkness. Even people, friends around you, they have gross darkness. They have hardened hearts. You have a specific assignment in that place. 
You have a very strong assignment. That was what happened to Ezekiel. God sent him in the midst of people that have hardened hearts. So the kind of person that you you are you are Japan or you are leaving your country and going to another country, you have a very strict assignment of God there. And if you don't take that assignment up, they will choke you, they will kill your life, and they will make, make you to be like them. They will choke you. They will kill your life. And they will make you part of them. He said, Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the Spirit of God has risen upon you.
on a journey into the wilderness. And you get there. And you begin to do according to the dictates of the gods of that land. If back in your own country, God took time, He worked on you, you pass through all kinds of challenges. He, 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 he molded you to be a vessel of honor to Him. But you get into those countries or any of the countries you are going and you change your heart to the one who is your father. How do you think you will feel? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So number one thing you do in that place is keep yourself pure. The first thing is you stand I'll give us two scriptures. Because in the country you are going, the Bible says, darkness has covered the land. And God's darkness has covered the people. So the first thing is yourself, you. You need to take care of yourself. Philippians 4 8 says something. Philippians 4 8. It says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, I'm telling you how you can survive in that country. Or and how you can use the content of survivor to shine, to forge, or to launch Christ. Those are the two things I want to say. I will close. So the first thing gets into that place because you are the atmosphere of Jesus. You carry the atmosphere of Jesus. You carry the presence of Jesus. You have God in you. God is light and he dwells in you. He has made your temple his temple. Amen. Jesus said, if you, if you abide in me, and I abide in you, he said, I will, I and my father will come and make your place our habit. Our dwelling place. That is if. So the forces that will make you get into that place to stand and keep standing Amen. is what? You said, whatever things are true. So anyone saying truth and true are this different. I've not fully read this Bible. He said, whatever things are true, 
whatever things are honest. Whatever things are just or righteous, because just means righteous. Whatever things are pure. This is how to keep the atmosphere alive. This is how to keep your light shining. This is how to keep God who is light to keep dwelling in your house. Whatever things are lovely. Love. Love is the love is love of God to us. So they are shed his love abroad in our hearts. You see that shedding of blood abroad in our hearts. So stick to that love of God is the most difficult things ever. The Bible is full of ways to stick to the love of God. Whatever things are of good reports, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, Think on these things. Meditate on these things. Engage on these things. Mutter on these things. Converse with these things. Relate with these things.
Follow. 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 After righteousness. Follow can be let your heart turn after righteousness. Let your heart turn in the direction of righteousness of God. Faith. Faith of the soul.
to pray. The word and prayers. Now, that time, don't start praying for the nation. You start praying for yourself. And start communicating and have strong communion with the Holy Ghost and with the Christ that is in you. Now, the second thing is that, and let me tell you, even when the second thing I've started, the first thing was continually. You must be doing those things continually. It will be like a fuel that drives you to your purpose. It is potential first before purpose. Not purpose before potential. Potential before purpose. There are all kinds of detestable bears in these countries. In the, old, in the Old Testament, God sent fire to destroy nations like that. Or we will tell a king to go and destroy those nations. It's even a whole baby boy, a whole day, kill him, or kill her. So the second thing, can I close, is how to make the hardened heart soft for God. So the that's all half A and B. By the time you are starting this focus, God will not send you to the whole world. He will send you to people around you, your household. People around you. If you check that Act 1-8, Act 1 8 says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem. These are the country. That Jesus was. And Judea. And in Samaria. So we send you to places around you. Why well, want you to first kill the territorial powers around where you dwell? Before God has said, ask for me and I will give you the edging for your inheritance. Before you get into asking, you must have first killed the household enemies. You must start from your environment. So if you are saying, ah, God, make me a minister of the nation, you, you don't know what you're saying. You must first kill all those evil powers that rules men around your community. When I say community, I mean your streets. 
Your street force, before we even talk about the collective streets, your street, even first is your house. If you live in a house with all other uh, rooms, you will start from there. You have to chase those evil spirits. You have to shift them. Light shine bit by bit. Brighter and brighter. It will not shine to the uttermost heart. Though you have God who is the light of this world in you. He said, greater is he than is in me. But he will not shine. What I will always say shine is that say, let your good works be known. So when they say arise and shine, it means that let people see that you are a king man. When anybody comes to you, you can only give what you have. When people come for you to you for canceling, cancel them and pray for them. Help them. That is how life shall. That is not shine because uh, they put sunlight on your head and you are moving in the midst of people. They will even think you are crazy. Now you are going out, they put bulb all around you and you are walking. People will be looking at you and say, wow, is he mad? Is he alright? Uh, can, can we call 911? It's like somebody is crazy. Can you go and pick him up? What is where they can see what is light? The spirit of wisdom, understanding, revelation, might, the same spirit of God. With all those things, you see how the fear of the Lord is one of the one of the spirit of the Lord. It's one of the seven spirits. They call it the fear. So even of the seven spirits is called the fear of the Lord. So God has not given us the spirit of fear. He has given us the fear of the Lord. Because that fear of the Lord is a spirit. The spirit of the Lord. So it means that everything you are doing, you don't have pride man. You don't, you don't have proud man. You don't let anointing to, you don't think you are anointing more than God. We are the one in here. You don't abuse your anointing. You don't have anointing skills more and can work far, far better than the one who is shining, who, who, whose life is as Christ. The one who has poured himself because it must be forced to you. Before you can shine, they must see the light. The reason why you say you cannot put you cannot put a light under a bow well. It means that, number one, the light must first be under a bowl. Do you know why? Bowel here, yeah, means that you must first be preserved. You must first be preserved. They must, I mean, you, you must be you first. You must allow that light to stay in you. You must stay in the presence of God. You must stay be not around the pulpit. You must stay in the tabernacle. You must stay as someone they don't know. You don't even 
proclaim your name. You are not doing things for people to know you. You are in the hiding place. You are in the order. Uh, 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 you are in the, uh, uh, the the tower. The name of the Lord is is a strong tower. You you allow God to force work on you and you. So he said, you don't put light under a shower. How will it shine? Number one, God needs to culture you. God needs to work with you. God needs to purge you. And you must allow God. So, after that time, then people begin to see. So people need, first need to see. Because there are some lights at that time. That light is more shining within than shining outside. So number one, you first be preserved. Number two, you begin to do things that they will know that this, there is something different about this guy. This guy is different. He said they will need to fight to go inside and pray. You see what the scripture says? It said that's second Timothy. Verse 23, he said, Who what, what foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strife. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, able to teach patience. He said, In meekness, in instructing those that oppose themselves, if God paraventure will give them repentance. To the acknowledging of the truth, and then, and that they may recover themselves out of the snail of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. So there will be a time that God is purging and dealing with you. That second Timothy. 2.22 we read, so from 23 to 26. There will be a time that your life will be under the bowel. That's the time God is purging, changing you. And that's the time you are also keeping the light of God in you. Nobody knows you at that time. You are at that time, you are a disciple. God is working on you and in you. But a time is coming that they have to remove the bowel. And people around you begin to see the, the light. You begin to shine. You begin to be, you be a sign. That is the culture. See, I want to make you a sign to the house of Israel. A sign. Make you a prophet. He begin to send you to warn them. And at that time, you need to now engage in prayers. So the first thing you will do is not to start and be preaching. The first thing to do is to conquer the natives, power and the spirit that rules those men. These are what is called behind the same purpose. You need to pray and crumble and destroy and shift those evil spirits around that area. Before you go out and begin to preach. Before you go out and begin to do signs and wonders and miracles. You will engage in very serious prayers. Amen. Hallelujah. So your environment first, your streets, you know, the connected streets, the uh, lane, the uh, crescents, all those places around you. You will be a witness. Means that you will testify. You, you see, you will, you will testify Christ. That is what's called New Testament. The testimony of Jesus. That time when they 
called you and they've changed you, I promise you, you will have, you will already have the testimony of Jesus. You already have what can turn hearts. But if you are not being purged, you don't have the testimony of Jesus anyway. Because when they are purging you, they are dealing with principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness. They are losing you first. So if they can conquer them within, then you can conquer them, conquer them around because they are the same. You must first conquer yourself before you can conquer the land God has sent you to. Or else you begin to walk with your mind. They begin to do all kind of buy and selling. You begin to merchandise in your heart. So when you have the way you act and you don't know why you have that way you are acting is because evil spirits are merchandising your heart. They are buying and selling thoughts in your heart. You are saying things and you are you are you are not happy. <clears throat> And you are acting, behaving somehow because things is buying and selling some way. Mm. And if you have that, how will God now trust you and send you and launch you out? So how will you shine? He said, arise. Arise. Means that your light can no longer stay under a bowl. Arise is when your light can no longer stay on. This one has been discipled. You see, arise and shine. You see, this one is no more, unknown, is no more stay under his comfort zone and borrowing your. What is comfort zone? When you are comforted doing. What you like doing, even if it doesn't have anything to do with God, you love what you, you love yourself. I'm okay like this. I love myself. I like the way I'm doing. I'm doing this because of I. You you are so uh, you are so happy with excuses. When you are giving excuses to God why you did what you do, it's because God, I, I know what your work says, but you know, uh, I need to raise my own, uh, I need to raise my own height or above your word. That's what it means. Hmm? I didn't want to learn that. I'm talking about that. I, 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 I'm comfortable. I, I know what you said. I know what the Bible says, but this this one, the reason why I did what I did was because you are giving God excuses. God, uh, uh, you are you are you are a God who I want me as God. I'm raising my own uh, 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 my own knowledge above you. That's what it means. So how will God send you out with that kind of attitude? How will you arise and shine? He didn't say uh, uh, shine from your own world. He said arise. You know, we are all seated. Yeah? But we will first stand and walk. The same person is the man who does not walk or stand or sit mm -hmm. hmm? so we everything start from sitting standing and walking so you may sit together with us are you standing are you arising are you removing the barrel so that people can see your light How will you change the hardened hearts? 
They are not one, they are not two, they are not three, they are not four. They just want to go in a place and do evangelism, do crusade, you know, casting out, destroying everything, the gods of that town and city and carry your bag and go. No, it doesn't work like that in this own, in this our generation. In the old generation, I mean generation of our fathers, it works. Or grandfathers, it works. In those generations of the uh, Kinetikis and all of them, it works. But our whole generation, things have changed. Say so you'll be a witness in your household, in your streets, in your community. And before we now begin to talk about uh, the old town, I begin to talk about states and country. Number one, what I say, keep your own light. Number two, arise. And number three, you be a witness. And the Lord will help you. So I, I want to raise one prayer for Pastor Sophie to come and write off. The prayer is Lord. I crush the heart of the nation I am with your hammer, spiritual hammer. I break the stoning heart of people. Can we pray this prayer? Oh Lord, I break the stoning heart of people. The tongues of what you're not saying is that Lord, I receive power to fight against principalities that rules me. Oh Lord, I receive the empowerment of God as one that have, have ranks and stature in the realm of light to fight against principality that rules men. That's what you say when you say you break the heart of the people that have a stony heart. Can we pray in tongues and around? Stand, Lord, I pray, I break in the name of Jesus, not according to my power, not by my power, not by my mind, but by the Spirit of God in me, in the name of Jesus. I break the heart, the stony heart of people in the name of Jesus Christ. I break the stony heart of the country, the heart of the community, the evil spirit that rules men in my community, the evil spirit that rules men in my streets. The evil spirit that rule men in my environment. In the name of Jesus Christ, oh Lord, I crush those spirits through the power of God. True greater of God that lives in me. It's not by power, it's not by might. In the name of Jesus, but by your spirit, by your power, by your might, oh Lord, I break every spirit, every power, every ruler, every principality that rules men in my community. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, oh Lord, I give them the heart of flesh that, that can receive the flesh of Jesus, that can eat the bread of life. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, and if you know anyone that you've been praying for, or you've been preaching to, or you've been nurturing, how this person can receive Jesus, can you accept that prayer to that person, call the person's name, and say, Lord, Jesus, no person, I break your heart. In the name of Jesus, and I give you the heart of flesh, the one, the heart that can listen to Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Can you pray? Can you pray? Can you pray? In the mighty name of Jesus, can you pray? Amen.